One of the main arguments I've seen against pursuing space colonization is how we're treating Earth. There's many versions of it, but the main idea boils down to let's not waste resources colonizing space when we still have problems on Earth. And at face value, this makes sense. Climate change, among other things, is arguably the biggest problem humanity has ever faced so far. We're facing environmental destruction on a larger scale than ever before. And whether you believe it's caused by humans or not, it's an undeniable fact that it's happening will have negative consequences to people, and we need to fix it. But the mindset that we must drop everything we're doing and focus on fixing our planet is harmful for several reasons. To say that to solve Earth's problems, we have to set our sights downward instead of upward is just wrong. In this video, we'll explore how this mindset is wrong, and even how colonizing space could open up the best solutions for climate change that we have available to us. Climate change is a major issue, but it's a solvable one. To say that we can only do one thing at a time is a disservice to how far we've come. Humanity has never just worked on one goal at once, we've always been multitaskers. We can do multiple things at once, like colonizing space and saving the planet, without slowing the progress of either of them. Because it is obviously beneficial to have both. A humanity with a stable planet and the vast resources of space available to it is a powerful one, both with their own benefits to the well-being of our civilization and to the average person. Not only that, but the two benefit each other. The progress of technology is not linear. It's a web, with every technology intrinsically linked to every other. Every field of science has produced technologies that inevitably benefit another field, which in turn creates more technologies to benefit other fields, and a feedback loop that sees the whole of our civilization grow in advance. By only focusing on one string of technology and no others does nothing to help solve our problems, resulting in less advancement overall, and the problem at hand gets solved slower. This is the situation with climate change and space colonization. By not colonizing space, the technologies that would come from it, like the launch benefits and vast raw materials of the moon, or groundbreaking advances in communication, environmental monitoring, and disaster relief, just to name a few, wouldn't happen, all of which are extremely useful in solving climate change. This works both ways. By only focusing on colonizing space and not solving climate change, the technologies that could be produced by saving the planet, like advances in genetics and power generation, which would be useful in space colonization, wouldn't occur. Both fields of science are linked to each other. A balance of funding and development in all fields is necessary to solve problems faster. So, the mindset of let's fix our planet before we move on to any other ones simply doesn't hold up when you see how linked the advancement of humanity is. So, we've seen how climate change and space colonization can produce useful technologies for each other, but that's only half of what we need. Can technologies useful in space colonization produce solutions for climate change? As it turns out, yes. Space-based climate change solutions are actually some of the best we have. All weather and climate systems on Earth ultimately depend on one thing, the sun. The sun provides energy needed to keep our atmosphere and oceans from freezing solid, as well as giving water the energy needs to evaporate, and creating clouds and rain. It keeps the air moving for wind and allowing these clouds to move around. The sun is the one thing that causes all the weather and climate systems we experience on Earth, and greenhouse gases trap the sunlight, which is causing Earth to heat up. Clearly, it's pretty hard to remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere once they're already there. Carbon capture technologies are still in their infancy, and we simply don't have enough time to wait for them to be sophisticated enough. We need near-term solutions to solve the climate change problem, because every moment we wait, it just gets worse. And there's really not a simpler solution than cover Earth in shade. Orbital shades are surprisingly easy to produce. All you need is essentially a big sheet of tinfoil at the Earth's Sun L1 point, with some way to keep it stable. If we were to build enough of these shades, which we wouldn't need a lot of, global warming could cease to happen and would give us vital extra time to fix the other problems associated with climate change, like the acidification of the oceans. The simplest possible way to stop Earth from warming is to stop the heat from reaching it in the first place, and we can do that with the use of orbital shades. Of course, directly blocking sunlight would obviously have other effects, but we can fix those too. By making our shades transparent to visible light but able to block other wavelengths, like infrared, which is what the majority of sunlight is, we can keep natural levels of sunlight while cooling Earth down. This completely bypasses problems with lessening the amount of sunlight, like reduced photosynthesis. Building giant swarms of shades at L1, which is a point directly in front of the sun from Earth's perspective, to stop Earth from warming seems like an impossible task, but it's really not. We have all the material and energy we need today, and doing something like this is well within our capabilities, though it would be expensive. The vast majority of expenses would come from the launch costs, but this too can be fixed by launching these mirrors from the moon. I've made several videos about why we absolutely need to colonize the moon as soon as possible, link in the description, and this is yet another benefit of doing so. 
The moon has vast amounts of raw materials, more than enough than what's needed to make all these shades. And with a lower gravity, it's incredibly easy to launch from the moon, far easier than launching them from Earth. This is truly one of the best ways to slow, stop, and even reverse global warming while we tackle the other problems of climate change. But if we want to do it without it costing trillions of dollars, we're going to need infrastructure on the moon. So this is great and all. We can slow down and even reverse the warming of Earth by launching orbital shades from the moon, but that's done nothing to fix the root of the problem. These shades would just be a band-aid over a much larger problem. How would space colonization stop the source of the problem, the use of fossil fuels? Well, these orbital shades don't have to just be shades. They could be mirrors, and that's extremely important. Space-based solar power is difficult, but is one of the best ways we know of to generate power. Free from the interference of Earth's atmosphere and day-night cycle blocking sunlight, solar farms in space will be far more efficient than solar farms on Earth ever could be. And if we're already launching orbital shades into L1, why not multitask? We could easily make the mirrors reflective, redirecting sunlight to power-collecting stations in Earth orbit, which would then be beamed down to Earth. Space-based solar power, should we use it, would drastically reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and would have no environmental impacts, unlike wind, water, and ground-based solar, which all have their own environmental problems. And if we're manufacturing and launching these on the moon, which we absolutely should be, then there are also no environmental problems that come with mining the material needed or launching them. There's no life on the moon we'd be destroying by mining it, and no fossil fuels up there. It's the perfect place to start our ascension to space and the fixing of Earth. Clearly, colonizing space, and most importantly, the moon, is not only possible while we stop climate change, but is absolutely necessary to saving Earth. It not only gives us valuable extra time to solve the problem, but can help eliminate our dependence on fossil fuels, as well as prop up colonies on the moon, which would be extremely beneficial for reasons I cover in other videos. This isn't far future stuff either. We could start all of this today, and we must if we want any chance of solving climate change anytime soon. With both the United States and China preparing to send humans back to the moon to establish permanent bases in the 2030s, these solutions can become reality in the very near future, and likely will. I genuinely believe that colonizing space is the only chance we have of stopping climate change anytime soon, simply because of how valuable orbital shade and space-based solar power is. So, the next time someone says that we shouldn't be colonizing space, and instead focus on saving the one planet we have, remind them that Earth isn't separate from space. It's a part of the universe just like the moon, sun, or other planets are. And the resources we can get from space will be necessary to saving our planet. By colonizing space, we aren't leaving Earth behind. Everything we do in space will inevitably go back to benefit Earth, whether it be the people that are living on it or its environment. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space colonization.